There we go. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and welcome to the Slang Advantages podcast. I am very fortunate to have with me Dennis Javier Hasso and Randy Sanchez of the fantastic group Matiras. And they're going to talk about their current music, their plans moving forward in 2024. Um, so I'm very pleased to do this. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us, Preston. Yeah, this is excellent. I really enjoy uh, the first single. Um, it has been, uh, it was it was quite interesting. So I, I love the, the first single, which is Materis. I know Esperanza is coming out relatively soon. Could you talk to me a little bit about how uh, Materis came about? Yeah, definitely. Um, so the, the song was um, inspired during the um you know i guess we're gonna get political right off the bat but it is a it is a song with political um with a political message um and uh the idea for the song came to me during during the uh, the, the trump era um and um but you know in, in, in all fairness I, I i do think that uh politicians i personally feel that uh don't speak the truth and to me the biggest truth that is not spoken is that there's so much money in, in politics um, that uh, that we just can't get anything anything done. Everything from gun control to healthcare um, to uh, income inequality in education that's all uh, rooted in money and politics. And I I truly feel like if we get that out of um, our political system, mm -hmm. we'll start to see real significant change. Um, and to me, that's just sort of the the biggest lie that I'm just waiting for that politician to come out. And there are there are a lot of there are some politicians that do come out and 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 speak about that. Um, but the ones that are that are real in power, the ones that are sitting in that Oval Office in that seat, they're the ones that that really need to to just look our nation in the eye and say, "You're we're bought, and we're going to start making some real changes about this." And and so to me, that was the. Uh, the inspiration uh, behind um, Mentiras and um, where the uh, the idea for the song began. And my own personal sort of thoughts on everything with, the, you know, I think um, when we do do some songwriting, you know, we're trying to be socially aware of things coming out. This is some new material that we're putting out. And it's been a little bit, a few <laughs> years, we, we did something uh, uh, new, but um I don't think it's, it was about like timing it either, right? You know, like trying to uh, make a political song because we're in a political atmosphere at this point, you know? Right. Dennis was already thinking about this song a few years ago, you know? And, you know, by the time it sort of manifests itself, gets recorded, produced, all this kinds of things, <clears throat> it just so happened, you know, that we're sort of landing in this uh, sort of uh, this time period right now where this elect this uh our our american elections you know especially during the presidency seem to be you know the focus of everything and you know personally i think you know we should be voting in everything all the way down to your local elections you know school boards even if you don't have kids you know you we need to you know lo you know sort of come together locally but also keep that same sort of uh, intensity when it does come to these uh, bigger sort of elections, you know, and and unfortunately with uh, rulings like Citizens uh, you know, United, this is why there's so much dark money in politics. Uh, there's so much money that when Dennis is saying things like, yeah, they're, they're bought off, you know, it's, it's almost obvious, like they, <laughs> it's, it's really known. And so we have a lot of work to do, you know, as, as, um, as the American uh, public, you know, to really, try to make a movement this year and hopefully we can start making some significant changes this this election cycle yeah i i, I appreciate that it, it is a political song but there's nothing wrong with being aware socially there's nothing wrong with talking about these issues uh, i don't speak spanish so for me one of the things that i enjoy about your, your music that i've heard is that it is uh, captivating. It is universal. It will bring the listener in and then give the listener an opportunity to explore the music and the lyrics more in depth. 
even if you don't speak the language. Um, for for the song uh, from Materis, you, you did bring in a um, a rapper, uh, Daniel French. How did that come about? Um, well, I've got, Las Cafeteras, the group Las Cafeteras, Daniel French is a part of um, that group. Um, and um, we've been a fan of the, the band for, for several years now. And every time they've come through, they pass through New Mexico, we'd... Um, go out and check them out. We've actually shared the stage with them a few times. Um, so just through those interactions, we've gotten to know a few of the band members, you know, pretty closely. We actually have their sound system, their, their board. <laughs> um, their, so we own part of their their, their, their legacy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, when they would come through and Danny would be around, Dan and I'd be hanging out and we'd always, you know, musicians always say, yeah, we should get together, we should collaborate. And, uh, but when I would talk with Danny, I'll, I just felt like I'm gonna I'm gonna hold Daniel to it, um, and so when this song came about, I was like, "This is this is the song that that um, Daniel should be on because Daniel is also uh, very much an activist um, and uh, politically involved, and the whole band Las Capateras is, and uh, it just felt like the the right time to to ask him to be a part of this, and he so generously and graciously agreed, and uh, I think his addition to the song just brought it up. And uh, said exactly what what we were wanting to You're say. Not, and I think with like the whole not someone like yourself who doesn't speak Spanish, you know, um, we've had that sort of reaction to our music throughout the years. We have a, a lot of non Spanish speaker speaking fans. Mm -hmm. They're drawn into it for the same reason you sort of mentioned. There's something about the rhythm, the melodies that draws you in, even though you 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 kind of might know what it's talking about, you're not getting everything out of it, but you you really are. And I think what's really awesome about this song, working with Daniel, is this this is an English crossover, mm -hmm. right? So you do sort of get not necessarily a summary of what's been going on. You know, you got his own take, but something and it's kind of cool because it's coming out of this sort of Thing of talking about lies, politicians lying, 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 and then Daniel's message is one of positivity a little bit. It's sort of reinforcing what we need to do as a society. So, being in English, that sort of opens that song up to a lot more people in that sense. And I think that's what they're going to hear. Great. If I could go back a little bit, and if you could speak to the writing process for the song and how that writing process may differ from other work that you're doing right now um yeah so that's a really good question a really good question yeah because um because what we're doing right now it, it is a different process than than mentiras and esperanza um so mentiras pretty much came about um i had written the chords and the the melodies and kind of put it together in this um you know in a midi sort of demo form mm -hmm. um and i was kind of humming along the melodies and and had some lyric ideas in mind of what I wanted the song to be about. Um, and our, and I'm, I'm Chicano. My first language is English, but I grew up around a lot of Spanish. So I, I can't speak Spanish, but it's not in the way that a, a native Spanish speaker would speak. Um, and Manuel is our sax player, who I always um, refer to and uh, mm -hmm. co-write a lot of our songs with. Um, and so I, I pass these ideas on, on to Manny. Um, and he wrote the lyrics. And once that was there together, we got together with Raul, I believe, at that point, right? Yeah. Raul Pacheco, of Oso Motley, uh, who produced these songs. Um, and Raul, Randy, and I sat here in this room. We're in, we're in our studio here in Santa Fe and uh, just kind of went through the song, went through the idea, and then just started kind of putting the arrangement together, piecing it together. Um, and once that was done, once the three of us had an arrangement that we felt good about, we brought in... Um, the band and and uh, started recording it and that was sort of the same process for both Mentiras and Esperanza mm -hmm. um, but the new song I don't know the, we're working on some new music now and that's a whole nother process that maybe Randy can talk about yeah I mean it's been actually an amazing past year or so with what we're doing I think our, our bands um you know we've been around for a little bit um but right now we're fortunate to have been surrounded by some amazing talent and some some people that have become really good friends like Raul Pacheco, you know, coming in and mm -hmm. sort of this uh, producer mind, you know. Um, and right now, like Dennis was saying, we, we did that process. We set everything up. We kind of worked that out. 
we're we're songwriting right now. Um, we're sitting in the same room here, and we're literally pressing play on the Pro Tools sessions. And we're like, what kind of chords do you do? We'll kind of come up with some stuff. Cool. You know, we're cutting and pasting all that. You know, we'll do multiple performances of something. That's an okay take. You know what? We Take that, put that in here. And all right, let's sing a melody. And you know, we were laughing because it reminded us of, if you've seen the, um, you know, what is it? The Greatest Night of Music, the making of We Are the World. Yeah. Uh, like Bob Dylan, you know, Bob Dylan having a hard time, right? <laughs> you know, I was like, we all had our Bob Dylan moment. We're just like, <laughs> we can't really do anything. But it, it was enough, you know, we got this little bit. We took our little ideas for melodies, just improvising. What do you feel? When we put that together, find the melody. We sat here for, I don't know, maybe an hour before we even started the session. And we would talk about what's going on in your life. You know, we've all had some significant things go on in our lives. And it's kind of catching up as buddies, too. But, you know, with the intent of like, maybe maybe there's some stuff we can throw down, you know. And a lot of us have written notes, you know, throughout here. So as some of our conversations lead into, oh, I remember it might refer to something I wrote here. To turn that around try to see if we can fit it into the melody and yeah right now we're we're, we're, we're on a roll it, it feels really productive you know so we we want to keep the momentum coming um we we did these last two songs and i think um myself i, I mean i'll speak for myself i'm very inspired right now i think the band feels inspired and moving in this direction so we want to kind of keep that going and see what else we can really come up with I mean, it's a fascinating process because it's a it's a 10 person band it's a big band so to come up with the concept of a song to write the song and then do the arrangement seems to that was seen to me to be a challenge yeah yeah it it it, it can be and you know and, and um I, for better or worse we don't have a, a formula or, or an equation i think every every song and everything we've done has sort of taken on a life of its own in its own uh unique unique way and um you know i think that speaks a lot to you know to the guys in in the band and just how um, open-minded how easygoing they are and um you know it's, it's 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 pretty awesome to be able to work with with such a flexible you know great work uh great group of, of individuals musicians mm -hmm. so for, for basic tracks do you start with your drums and then rhythm guitar and a bass or how does that work like in the recording process, a little different, right? Like with, with Mentiras and Esperanza, Dennis okay. pretty much had an entire MIDI track somewhat really, really laid out. Our, our tempo established, the, the, the section, the form set up, mm -hmm. uh, we went into the studio and then we would just start to um, sort of minus some things, right? So we went to uh, the Kitchen Sink, which is a really renowned studio here in Santa Fe with uh, John O'Manson. And we recorded drums. They have a really great room, big room. We wanted big sound on these drums. So we went in there, sort of, Dennis started first, laid his drum tracks. And even then, there was there was creative process going on. Dennis had, we had the idea of what the drums were going to be, but we need to now, as we're really laying down the track, it has to have its own life, you know, and it has to have some kind of intent to it. So little things, how do we arc the song? You know, I mean, it's not going to be just full on drums right from the beginning. You know, there's this sort of orchestration that really starts to come together there, you know. So Dennis laid his drums. Mm -hmm. We get that part sounding. Percussion came in. Um, I think we did bass next, the string instruments, guitars. And the, th those same concepts that started from the beginning say, would carry through. Um, I had a finesse part that's there. You know, I get my own little creativity on it, but I, I do have parameters to stick in. But even then, it's like, well, what about this? Let's pull this back. All right, let's get a little bit more here um, until we sort of have it all laid out. And then we add vocals. Once everything's done, we add the vocals so the performance can happen with the vocals, with everything on there. And that also takes its finessing, you know, and how you want to arc it here and there. It might, might not have been like that in the original recording, but the intent was there but you really now need to nail it on, on the recording. So that's kind of what that process was. And I, and I assume like once we get with these other songs, sort of the form and everything there, I, I assume that's going to be kind of similar to what goes on. We'll I'll have our tempos established. That'll sort of be our 
click track, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, and we'll kind of build from there. So, so uh, I'll I'll ask the music geek question because I don't That's know. Awesome. Any... <laughs> but, yeah, did, you, yeah. did you already have uh, like, Randy? Did you, were you thinking about the dress part before when you heard the song originally? I mean, how did that come? How did you decide the dress would be? Yeah, Perfect. like um, with Esperanza, there's heavy tres in that one. Um, okay. Dennis pretty much had an idea laid out for it, you know. So I had asked him to, I think he recorded MIDI, right, with the keyboard, you know. So he had this sort of Montuno idea, you know. But he's also like, this is what it is, but, you know, kind of do your thing. But I'm also like, he knows what's up. He knows we have to stick in certain parameters if we're doing like this salsa song, you know. Things have to line up because there's 10 of us, right? I mean, there's two percussionists a drummer there there's two guitar players all this stuff has to line up you know everything has a certain part you know it's not doubling up on certain things or just overplaying so all this has to really sort of lock in there so when i get time for my thrust part i'm like this is what 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 i have <laughs> to work with you know and i'm going to stick these parts here and then here's some parts that i'm hearing that I might with the transitions, I might be able to add some of my little flavor that I have on that. Mm -hmm. And these guys are really like, yeah, no, that's cool. Cause it, it is somewhat, I want to say a generic idea because that does sound kind of like it's, you know, not like an amazing idea, but it's just the basic sort of thing that we need to nail down. And then I can kind of glisten over that. And that happens for all the other instruments. Um, I even think when we had the horn line originally written for Mentiras, it had a certain swing to it. Once it came time to record the horns, a different kind of swing was added to it to really emphasize certain movements in the rhythm of the song. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> you know, I am I like that, you know. So that's kind of how I would approach it. And in Mentiras, I did a lot of guitar on that. I did some guitar, but I had a different thought. Uh, there was quite a few chords in this song that Dennis brought, you know. And <laughs> But in the end... It's not really about playing everything. It's really playing the the intense parts that are really going to stick out, you know. And I think that's what helped about having a producer like Raul with us, and why we're interested in kind of continuing this do this route because we've mm -hmm. been working together for years, you know. So we we're we're stuck in what our own sort of idea is about what something is. Sometimes you need that outside sort of perspective, you know, to sort of like what does the fan really want to hear you know i mean we know what we want to hear you know but as a producer you can be like well as a fan this is what i want to hear but this right. is also probably what you want to hear too as the artist and you're like yeah you know this is so much more better than what i thought it was gonna be you know sure uh, um correct me if i'm wrong but i believe you've self-produced some of your work before i know you worked uh, with um chris trujillo uh, who is a fantastic percussionist, and now Raul. Um, and any change in terms of what Raul did for you versus your own self-production or or Chris? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Chris um, produced us, gosh, it's been a long time. The band is, well, right. is old. <laughs> That's been around three years. And I think, let's say, Chris produced us in 2004, so 20, 20 years ago. Um, and we were... 20 years younger we were we were kids for lack of a better word um and I, I think I was our first time working with the producer and I think we just all learned so much and uh, grew so much musically uh from that experience and just really saw working with Chris what it takes to to make an album making an album is a lot different than getting on stage and, and playing music um and I think just sitting there and, and working with Chris that album took us about I think six months to make we thought we were going to go in there and, and knock an album out in two weeks and then it ended up being this oh. this huge process um and you know that was that's just out of na how naive we were at the time you know we just we really uh just grew a lot as individuals and uh and Chris just really like really like mentored us you know he was he is and was a really good friend at that point and and, and still is but um you know, he just brought his um, experience, his studio experience. I mean, he's a a a session LA cat. You know, he's played. Right. With him. I mean, you name it, he's he's played with him. He's on 
on platinum album. Yeah, and he's <laughs> and he's coming into us now, and he's all like, "Hey, look, uh, this is what I learned from like Toto, or this is what like you know, the Rick Rubin, <laughs> you know, and like you're like, <laughs> you know, and so yeah, so yeah, and I think by the, you know when we when we self produced, we definitely took a lot of everything we've learned learned from Chris, um, and just brought it into into uh, in, into the studio with us, and um, you know, and, and learn to be be self critical because we didn't really have like a sort of a appointed producer when, when we're self produce producing you know um some of us are there um all the time you know and uh and so we'd bounce ideas off of each other depending on like who's tracking at the time but we really relied on i mean you know ourselves to be self-critical like well you know what do you did you like that yeah i think that's cool and, um and then so now coming after going from Chris to self-producing now to Raul, I think it's just it's been a nice um evolution for us because um Raul just really kind of I think gets us. What I really loved about working with Raul is is he he knows the band and he knows our um abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's gonna push us up to that point. Not to the point to which we start feeling like I can't do this, you know, that you're asking too much of me, but just to that point to where like I, I can do this and and I am going to do this, you know, um, and it, it's just really great to to work with Raul in that in that way. His parameters he sets, you know, he's like, you know, I mean, ego wise, you always want to be the best musician there is, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's just, you know, you, you have limitations and, and this is OK. This is what I'm learning a lot from. It's not a. I mean, we're, I'm always going to strive. I still practice. I'm still always trying to be a better musician. But Raul is like, well, we're going to take what you got and we're going to make that. That That's that's what we have to work with. But that's that's more than OK. You know, we're going to we're going to turn that into something that's going to be awesome. So you don't go in really feeling like you, don't, you can't really perform these things you actually feel inspired and it kind of gives you that maybe that extra little 10 percent, you know and and um just kind of approaching it that way has been 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 pretty great you know so and I'm, I'm happy we're kind of back in that mode we had chris for a while and he went back to la a few years ago quite a few years ago and back out there doing work and so you know that was a that was a valuable asset that we mm -hmm. lost and we didn't really get to develop anything, anything more with him in that producing sense. So we were left on our own with what we had learned from Chris. Fortunately, YouTube and all this stuff, we're watching these guys, Ricky Otto, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to get all these things. And, but yeah, it does come to a point where you're self-producing and you're going to, you're going to put those self-imposing limits on you if you're self-producing, right? You're only going to think you're, this is what it is. You know, does that sound okay to you? Yeah, that's fine. You know, and, Right. That's, that's as far as it goes, you know, is there something else that we can grab from out here? Having somebody like, you know, just won a few Grammys and things like that. You know, it's a, it's it's uh, it's easier to hear these kinds of things and mm -hmm. see what his direction might be. And he sees our potential, you know, and he's played with us a few times, too. So it's not like he's coming in cold and doesn't know who we are. We, we've actually developed personal relationships, too, which I think this happens in a producer artist collaboration you know mm -hmm. I, I we read stories of how producers can be really hardcore in the bands and we hear the you know the behind the scenes story but i can guarantee you 98 percent of the time those people are really tight with each other they've they've shared a lot of sort of things and, and creativity together during that sort of time and and, and that journey mm -hmm. makes makes the tracks worth it you know yeah it's good to hear so we talked about um the first single um <clears throat> uh, materials and we talked also about esperanza a little bit which i believe is the second single coming out relatively soon that's right yeah we don't have an exact date we're kind of seeing you know we're kind of you know playing the game a little bit just see when the, when the time is going to be right to follow up uh, yeah and i know a lot of artists i've talked to talk about the process of releasing new music. Do we want to release a whole album, drop a whole album? Do we want to do singles and then a whole album? You're working currently on uh, a completed work, though, an uh, album, correct? That's right. Yeah. It's yet to be determined whether that's an EP or an LP. Um, right. But I think we're just, 
there are a lot of ideas out there within the band that we're all putting together and that we're all working on them. And uh, it could be a situation to where we have too much and we just need to pick, you know, the few that, that that really feel like they fit together on a on a completed work, you know. Um, but we'll see. You know, it's always nice to put out a full length album. So, and we'd like the single sort of model. I I do these days. You know, I mean, I, I I'm a fan of albums. I grew up listening front to back on albums and concepts and stuff you know and there's a few artists that still fortunately have those resources that can kind of still do that um the landscape's changed you know for yeah. some of us sort of working class type of musicians that are still doing this art you know um but it's kind of cool to release a single you know we're not sitting here waiting a year two years on material we we have a plan there's a way to release it there's still a little bit of wait time when it's done you know we have to put everything through a publicist right get get interviews set up so we can really have a, a bigger impact when this comes out as opposed to just showing the song locally you know or anything like that so but there's 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 um th there's things out there that that can allow for these singles to be released a little bit more impactful um, and that's that's kind of cool, you know. I mean, this this helps people that don't have budgets to get into studios, you know, to release new material. You know, you don't you you might spend a lot on that one song, you know, but you know what? You're probably gonna end up with a really great sounding tune, you know, and that might be have more, you know, of an impact for for people than maybe a full album, you know, that maybe somebody's not ready to hear that from you just yet. It's not a slight that you're not a great artist or whatever. It's just, you know, our, our attention spans these days are so short. Yeah. You know? and so I think even that we've been talking about how people's attention spans are short. Like some of our songs before we used to, I don't know, four minutes, five minutes. Right. We didn't really think about it. Right. Now our part of our formula, it's, it's not like we're trying to confine it, but we're, we're, trying to put a parameter of maybe, maybe a three minute song, you know, like let's, mm -hmm. can we say everything we need to say in this? And yeah, it turns out you can say quite a bit, you know, in three minutes, you know? So that's kind of a model we're, we're, we're kind of going with and embracing at this point. Randy, I wasn't thinking about that. That's, that's a very good point because uh, materials is so impactful musically. It sounds great. I mean, the engineering is perfect. The percussion, the drums, the guitar, it, the horns, it sounds, it sounds great. Um, yeah. And it, it, it jumps out of the speakers. Um, and I think you're right. It is more impactful to hear the, a single like that and neither attention drift off. It, it really doesn't get to it. So yeah, I, I certainly appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to the next singles. And if the album does come out, great. I'll be in line to pick that up and we'll talk about that as well. Um, I have two more questions and I know we're running out of time. So I, I may send these to your public, but I want you to get some thought to this. One question I typically ask is about what equipment you use in studio. So I'll, I'll send that to your, your publicist and ask her about that. Um, and I know you're on your, your, you have some sporadic road dates and I know that's going to be picking up for you, right? That's right. Yeah, we're going to be um, playing at a Topanga Days Music Festival, Topanga Canyon, in um, uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, and I think it's the following week or maybe two weeks after that, we'll be up in Denver um, playing at the Levitt Pavilion with El Sol de Ron Pepera. Um, and in August, we'll be back in California, in, in San Diego, doing um, a show out there. And and those are kind of our anchor dates. Okay. And uh, we're trying to build around some more dates around those on the road one thing we do got coming up that's i guess we could probably start we start seeing some announcements come out for it but um uh we're going to be performing with the uh, santa fe symphony orchestra uh july 9th it's going to be a free show here in santa fe um they're celebrating 40 years of the santa fe symphony orchestra we're celebrating you know 30 years <laughs> you know so but last year we were commissioned by the San Juan Symphony Orchestra in Durango, Colorado, um, to perform with their with their orchestra. Um, our good friend Michael Hood uh, arranged these pieces. Um, we we managed to get scores of about uh, ten songs. We're working on twelve songs for forty piece orchestra at least, 
And so we're really excited about sort of presenting that in our home state, our home area, mm -hmm. uh, and having like this amazing orchestra back us up. San Juan was amazing experience having that kind of pop kind of thing happening in this orchestra. And now we're coming to a place that's a little closer to us. You know, we, we really thank Durango and San Juan for having that kind of vision for us. But that really allowed us to end up with um, these scores. And so that's that's a big thing coming up for us in July as well. Fantastic. Well, if you're ever in the area, if you're ever I'm in uh, Georgia outside of Atlanta. So if you're ever in this area, let me know. Or if you're in Chicago, where I'm from, um, where I used to live. I'll certainly stop by and see you all. Um, yeah, fantastic yeah. new songs. Um, and your your YouTube page is really great in terms of showing what went on in the studio. So I appreciate that. Is there anything else that, you, oh, the other question. Um, I'll send this to your publicist as well. Uh, your five favorite albums. So usually people struggle with that. Um, so I'll give you some time to give that some thought. Those are the hardest questions, man. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can talk about like uh, turmoil in the bands or any of that. It's easier to answer than like, what's your favorite? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, like what genre? <laughs> yeah, everyone kind of struggles with that. Well, I, think with I us, appreciate we, Yeah, we love music, you know? Right. I mean, we just love music. And even though we're in a Latin genre, that that's sort of what life has taken us towards. But man, we music is amazing you know so wow well, yeah i think to, to maybe at least for me i've uh well we all have you know when i was young i grew up you know listening to a lot of rock music um listening to like a, as a drummer john bottom and you know pert from mm -hmm. you know like let's up rush so right. like houses of the holy is a great let's zeppelin album uh moving pictures from uh, Rush, and then you know, as I was getting to college, I started listening to a lot of jazz and playing a lot of jazz. Mm -hmm. Um, so like Birth of the Cool, uh, Miles Davis, Bitches Brew, um, A Love Supreme, um, and uh, and then even just like some some other stuff like Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Come Blind. That's that's probably something that I I put on at least maybe once a month because it's just wow. every time I hear, there's so much going on in that album that I. So okay, here's something new. I've been jamming houses of the holy like, yeah, lately, bro. <laughs> like I mean, that's why you say it because I've been like it's been on my rotation heavy right now. But there's so yeah, there's so much good music, and I mean, I feel like that doesn't even touch the tip of the iceberg. It's like yeah, but, so um, much yeah, good music, but, so little time. <laughs> exactly. Is it anything else you want to add? Uh, well, I'd love to say thank you to you, Preston, for for having us. I think it's important to have people like you out in the world that are giving. Um, an opportunity uh, for musicians like ourselves to, um, to you know, to, to promote our music, to give us a chance to talk about what what we do, and uh, and just you know, kind of giving us a platform to do that. So yeah, so thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, we've been finding some conversations. Usually, is how some of these interviews have been mm -hmm. going, and it's nice because it feels like we get to know you a little bit more. Um, I like be we act, we like being asked technical questions on what's a lot of times it's always like what was the intent of this, you know, and it's sort of that, and it's, it's hard, you know, cause that's ethereal, right. You know, mm -hmm. sort of out there, but when you want to talk about gear, I'm like, oh yeah, well, I got a, you know, I got this 1970, 72 pawn shop, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm more than happy to talk about gear. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate your time. Um, I will reach out to a couple of this again and let her know when everything is up and I'll follow up on your next singles as well. Um, so, uh, I'm going to stop the recording and I appreciate your time. Thank you.